Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Bart Lacroix. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, the 1% Club and also of the uh, NILAB you just saw. So the NILAB was there even before MLAB was here. So we, we were seeing they were having this cool space in, in Nairobi and I was sitting with Peter and with uh, Hayo and we were like, why shouldn't we set up such a space in Amsterdam? We also deserve a cool space. So that's why we called it MLAB, Innovation for Social Change. Um, and I would like to start with a small video. Lion. And the question was, can you change the world with just two pieces of paper? And uh, Hayo from Text to Change came running in and he said, okay, there's this question from Gates and I think we, uh, the three of us can answer it. Um, and the question was, uh, aid is working, tell the world. Easy question. Uh, so we sat together with uh, ACFO, Text to Change and 1% Club. And Already for five years, all of us have been building these cool tools. So text to change is making cool uh, tools for uh, mobile surveys in developing countries. ACFO, you all know, uh, they have Flow, it's a very nice tool, and they have the real simple reporting. Um, as One Percent Club, we built uh, crowdfunding and crowdsourcing tools. And we were like, when we had the idea of sitting together in this building, we didn't have a clear plan. We were looking a bit like all the people in the video. <laughs> um, but we had more or less the vision, like one day we can combine all these tools and build something really nice. And actually this question from Gates triggered us to sit together and really look at how could we put this, uh, all our tools together and make it one idea. So we came up with the answer. Um, so aid is working, tell the world. It's a pretty hard question, right? So our solution was, uh, is aid working? Let's ask the crowd. Because why should we tell the world that aid is working? Why shouldn't we involve everybody in a development change and ask them uh, what they think and give them access to the data so they can form their own opinion if aid is working or not? Um, so we wrote this down on two, on two pieces of paper and we sent it into Gates. And then we had to wait. And then uh, suddenly we got the answer that we were one of the winners. So there were over 1,000 uh, ideas uh, being sent in. And out, out of these 1,000 ideas, 10 were chosen as the winner. So 10 uh, got uh, 100,000 euro to build their first prototype of their idea. So we got invited to Seattle. And we got to work two days with really creative people there to work on our, our idea. Um, so is it working, tell the world, or um, involve the crowd, a crowd? We wanted to do it in a new way, so not an old-fashioned way. So instead of uh, top-down, we wanted to do everything bottom-up. So we would start with the, the projects, the grassroots projects on the ground. The other thing is we, don't, we didn't want to do uh, an evaluation on a single viewpoint, but we wanted to use multiple viewpoints. So we wanted to go from the world to a village to doctors, experts, people involved on the ground. So we wanted to ask everybody their opinion. Uh, of course, it needed to be open because we are big believers of open, right, Thomas? <laughs> and we wanted to do it real time. So not evaluate after two years the project is finished, but see if you could gather real time data. 
Um, now, we were explaining all these ideas there in uh, Seattle, and the, uh, these were all like marketing guys. They were doing like big commercials for Nike and stuff. And they were there helping us to coach us, and they say, well, you have nice technology and you use a lot of nice words, but we don't understand what you're really saying. You should be, you should be able to say it more simple. You should come up with a, with a name that everybody would understand. So then we came up with the name 360. Um, and actually the idea is 360, well, we want to create a 360 feedback loop because we want to involve everybody in the chain answering this question, is 8-wheel work really working? And wouldn't it be cool if 360 would become the new short code that everybody can SMS? So if you're in the field and you want to give your feedback to a project, wouldn't it be cool if you can SMS 360 and give your feedback or your opinion if 8 is working or not? So that is our big dream, our big goal. Um, so then we started the pilot. Um, and actually, I just want to show you the results. Imagine a tool that shows how aid is working. In this interconnected world, our every action creates data. That data opens up shows how aid is working. In this interconnected world, our every action creates data. That data opens up new possibilities. Through the technologies we use, like our smartphone, we tell the stories of our lives. Activity started. Every day, hour, and minute. It's the real-time tale of us, the story of our heartbeats, and the paths we travel in life. We believe we can create meaningful social change by putting data to good use. The 360 tools bring this possibility to life. We connected relevant data concerning maternal health care in Uganda. What makes 360 unique is that we collect real, first-person stories from the ground. Like that of Lynn, a young mother raising her child in Jinja. The flu and cough has been there for her. After her visit to the maternity clinic, she's letting us know directly what she thinks of the quality of this clinic using her mobile phone. With this information, the doctor and management of the clinic can see how they can improve the quality of their clinic. 360 connects everyone involved in the development chain, Lynn's data, and the data of all mothers like her find their way to a local NGO and the government all the way up to a global level. Everyone can connect and share their stories to learn from each other. Lynn can now see her opinion has true value. 360 shows how aid is working in real time. Everyone can start making better choices and provide effective help for those who need it. Now the whole world can see how aid improved Lynn's life. So, is aid working? Find out yourself. Join the future of aid transparency now at go360.org. To, to make a video that shows like the future, but our challenge was to really, um, let me see if I can go. Not, not to make only a video of uh, uh, how it would look like, but really also uh, build it based on real data in a real environment with real people. Uh, so that's actually the case we did. We really went to Uganda. We chose, okay, let us choose one topic that uh, all of the three organizations are involved in and that we can get our data. And that's why we chose uh, maternity health. Um, and we really start with, um, with all the data that we have. So our dream was to, to start from the world and you sh would be able to dig down to country, district, village and to a person that you have the real uh, grassroots stories. So what we did first was we looked at what open data sets were available on a world level. And we put them in here and visualized them that people that you yourself can compare all these uh, data sets. And you can compare how is the situation in America and the Netherlands and Uganda. Um, then we looked like, okay, what data sets are available on country level? So on the Uganda level, we looked at like what open data sets are available. We looked like which uh, hospitals uh, were available and what we could visualize. Um, 
Then on district level, uh, text to change they uh, did a, a, a mobile text research and they asked people the opinion uh, and uh, the, they test their knowledge about uh, health. So we have all kind of data on on that issue. So we can really see on a large group of people like what what they know about it. Uh, then there is of course uh, programs running there. And then on the village level, uh, ACFO used uh, the, the flow tool to do exit interviews at three hospitals. And they asked the people coming out of the hospital what they think about the, the service that was provided. So these are also all kinds of questions. So did, uh, did it improve? And the cool thing is that you can really um, compare the three hospitals. So also Lynn, she can see now what's the best hospital. And the doctor in the hospital can also compare her the results with another hospital. So they can benchmark their own results. And we even spoke to them and some, some of the hospitals actually improved some of their services based on this, uh, on this study. And then the lowest level is the, the personal level. And there we collected uh, first person stories. So for example, Lynn, and we made uh, personal videos to get also her opinion and her story. Um, so the question was, uh, is aid working, tell the world? Uh, we just figured out what data we could gather and bring it all together in one piece. Uh, and actually I was thinking maybe we should manipulate the data a little bit to show actually that aid is working. But actually we didn't have the time for that and it was too <laughs> complex. So in the end I was looking at the data and I was like, okay, let me judge now myself and go through the data and see what my conclusion is, is AID actually working? Uh, and I saw actually three things. One is that there is still a big difference between our maternal health in America, the Netherlands and Uganda. Uh, two, I could see that there is really improvement in Uganda over the last uh, years on all indicators. And three, on the interventions that have been done on AID, I can see that there is improvement and that people are relatively positive about it. So my conclusion was, but I looked through my eyes to the data that aid is actually working, but everybody can judge for themselves. Thank you. Are there any questions? Any questions? He asked what will be the next step uh, now. Um, so for Gates, uh, we applied now for one million to, uh, to upscale this, uh, this whole thing. But uh, no matter what, we want to, uh, we have now these tools, we combine them and we want to get as much showcases as possible. So we would like to do it on a country level, for example, on water, or we can do it on, Gates can hire us to do it on a certain topic they are doing. We, yeah, I would like to to do more, uh, yeah, more the same exercise on more topics, more countries, more teams, to show actually that it's working. Uh, yes, of course. That 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 that's the whole idea, right? So the, I think that, sorry. Uh, so uh, on the long term, if uh, external partners, other partners can also connect. Uh, um, yeah, that's the whole idea. So the whole idea is that the tools are open source available and the data is open source available. So other parties can also use it. Yes. Good question. <laughs> Yeah, um, last year we also did a, an uh, open data for development camp and we were actually like, uh, you should start on two sides actually. Eh? So Gates, if they're giving money, we should try to follow the data and the money. 
And at, uh, at the bottom, at the grassroots level, we should also see which money gets there and go up and see if we can meet in the middle somehow. That, that would be like a, the ideal. And that's what we more or less try to visualize. Like, wouldn't it be cool that everybody at their level starts gathering data and we can connect it? Because then open data really starts to make sense. And then Gates can see what's the impact, but also the partners of Gates and the people involved, so. You have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, it's a very hard question, but uh, it's more or less a vision that uh, the more data you make available, uh, then researchers or students or policy makers, they can use that data and they can, if they find it useful, they can build their own tools on it and analyze it and use it. Or Because we also integrated sets of the World Bank just to improve our case, right? So. Why, why, why do you say that? I don't, I don't really see uh, how uh, the improvement uh, for Lynn. is going to happen uh, who is going to do what with this research content. S so uh, one of the examples is that the, the three hospitals, we gave them the, the data back and the director of the hospital actually made an improvement uh, on the hospital because of the, the data she, she, she got. Is that not a good example, you think? Well, Mariana, what improvement did she make? Because I don't know. Uh, they uh, reduced the waiting time for the uh, market. Yeah. Because they looked at the process and the waiting time uh, was the first thing that uh, was the main... Uh, so the waiting line. <laughs> yeah. So that the... So the d one of the, the results was of the, the, the mobile inquiry was that the, the waiting time for the models in the hospital was too long. So we give this data back to the director of the hospital and she actually made an improvement in her hospital. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that's a good question, you know. I, ho I hope Gates picks it up, and I hope the Ugandan, the Ugandan uh, government looks at it, and I hope the, the World Health Organization uses this, and, and the local hospital, and I also, also hope in the end Lynn uh, can look at this data and choose the right hospital for her, and, and give her feedback on what she thinks. Yeah. Uh, I, I think maybe the way to look at it as a pilot that's going to show what is, it's a pilot that's going to show what is possible. And you need some of these cutting edge things to happen before, you know, three or four of these happen, people see that it's working and then it'll be slowly mainstreamed. Uh, so maybe that's the role of an idea like this. Yeah. Now the mic is working for the live stream. <laughs> 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 But you could hear her? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was just saying that maybe we look at this as a pilot. I, if it's not working, it's, no, it's fine. Working for the okay, <laughs> but I already said this. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> um, I was just saying that maybe we look at this as a pilot, right? So w w whenever you have a cutting edge, an idea, a model that needs to be developed, it's first developed as a pilot, in a, uh, like a proof of concept. And once that's working and it's tried out in three or four places, then you move to the next step of mainstreaming it. You know, governments pick it up. So this is the role of this is not so much to mainstream and scale it up yet. It's more to prove that something like this can happen. Do you agree or not? No, I don't agree, basically. Because if you want to develop a pilot, you should take into account all those considerations, how to mainstream one day in the whole system. If you don't do it now, 
When are you going to do it later? This is the whole problem you are facing in a developing world. We are making a lot of pilot, and we don't end up having something sustainable at the end of the day. Because in the beginning of your pilot, we are not talking no more a pilot at UNICEF, because it doesn't make any sense for us. Because in the, in the, in the, in when you are piloting, if you don't take into account, you have a huge problem to mainstream in the system. What you need to address in the beginning of the whole programmatic area. Yeah. If you don't address this, it will be you have a zero chance to have yeah, something you durable. I think what I think this is a beautiful tool. See it as a tool, a wrench, uh, uh, whatever, a screwdriver. This tool you can you have to find out once the tool is there. You, you sit around with a number of people and find out where and how you can use it. Mm. And um, I think the next step is, and, and I agree with you, there's too many, too many pilots that, that never end up to something useful. But uh, I feel this environment is rather uh, uh, creative. And I think that what if you have this tool, you sit around with a number of people from completely different uh, areas in the world, not from your IT section, but from completely different sections, and then you find out where and how you can use this, you can come up with, with some very, very um, progressive and inventive new ways of improving uh, development aid. Yeah, um, yeah I, I disagree a bit here, and I <laughs> agree with more. And, uh, the thing is that it shouldn't start with tools, it should start with the people and looking at what is needed. But the difference in that case is that when we talk about open data and development at the moment, like we have huge data sets, we have a lot of data that is open, but no one knows what to do with it. Like people on the ground don't have access to it because you know if you are not the geek, you cannot read it. So that's a tool that gives it really, or opens the possibility to give it in the hands of the people on a level and visualize it in a way that, that is not existing yet. So from that perspective, it kind of closes a gap and of course, then it's about what to do with it. I'm already happy that it triggers the, the discussion, actually. <laughs> Peter. No, because maybe uh, I just want to say a few words about it, because I think there is what to me and to us, I think, was quite unique, that there is scale in elements of this, right? So some of the tools that we've been using are happening now on national scale. So, so the scale is there, but it's, it's there in components of what we're trying to do. And what we thought was interesting that I don't think anywhere globally there's been a case where you do, you know, online reporting and storytelling, mobile-based surveys, SMS, normal phones, surveys, crowdsourcing, open data on five levels and do it. And yes, it's a very thin, you know, strip and nothing more. I agree with Sunit, it, it's, it shows what's possible, but I think conceptually it can change how people think about things. And that is what actually is needed, right? It, it's system change from control to open, from, you know, the, the whole shift. And I think people, because what we run into, if you're trying to explain this on paper to someone, you're lost. So I think you need you need to visualize it, and yes, it, it also needed the quite you know I would say American style video on top of it, but it it's needed to get people to think in a certain way, and then I think that's where we are, and the possibilities of that we don't even know I think, but I think it, it's very powerful if it's picked up at scale, and I think we're very close to the point that either a government or a large organization will say hey, it's you know let's try this somewhere, so then that's what we hope right that's where we are I think. You all agree with Peter? <laughs> 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 Boring. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.